Hi everyone! Tonight we are going to find our fairy tale and slay some serious dragons with a paintbrush. <laughs> this is a very small paintbrush. Um, with lots of paintbrushes, okay? Uh, here's the thing. I love to draw. I love to paint. I have loved art since I was a little girl. And I used to draw to tell stories. I would sit next to my parents while they had their, their tea in the morning on the weekends, and I would just draw these epic stories of princesses and dragons. Hmm, fairy tales, sound familiar? And I never once thought about what it looked like in the end. I only thought about what it felt like while I was making that art. And so, Tonight's guest is artist Katie White. She is an incredible watercolor artist who has a story that really reminds us to look back inside and find that joy when it comes to doing things that involve creating a product. And I wanna talk about process versus product and feeling versus result and why it's so important to go back to doing the things that we loved when we were a kid. She's requesting to be live right now. You know what that means. It means I lean forward and I say, yes, yes, view. Why is it not doing it? Come on, come on, come on. I don't know why, that, let's see. I'm waving at you. Katie, hi. So here's the deal with Katie while I try. There we go, go live with Katie White Artist. She started off as a child. She was incredibly talented and off she went to college to study art. And while studying it, while learning her craft, she fell out of love with it. But now she's back in love with it. And she's joining us live tonight. Hey, Katie. Hi, how are you? Armed and dangerous. Good. I am too. I, I have dug out a lot of things. And you know, I, I wanted to start off as I introduce you to everybody with looking backwards all the way to childhood. You know, I was digging through my paints today and I found this. It, it says Bonnie on it. I grew up as Bonnie, not Sir Bonnie. And it's my handwriting from when I was about mm, 11, 12, maybe. It still is somehow alive. I don't know how. <laughs> it's more alive than my ability to paint and the time that I put in it. But I want to go back that far because you started painting and creating art as a child. Why was that? What made you first fall in love with painting? So I, um, I had a learning disability as a child. So my parents wanted to build my confidence outside yeah. the classroom. And so they plugged me in. I was in third grade. I remember when I was diagnosed. And they said, you're going to go to the lady behind us. This yeah. wonderful woman had a little art studio up in our garage apartment here in Tampa. And I would walk through our backyards up there with my oil paints. And I probably took lessons from her for about gosh, maybe six or seven years. And so the love for art started there. Yeah. And I, you know, I really just am grateful for my parents in that moment, recognizing where my weaknesses were and how to build my strength. Mm -hmm. and, um, so as I struggled in school, I never felt bad about myself because I always had the art to feel, you know, to build that confidence. And so that's what I used to tell my students all the time was you just got to find your place in this room so that you can carry it out into the other rooms where you don't feel so great. Yeah, it's funny. I, I'm laughing because I, I have a four-year-old and I tell him I, I made his favorite, <laughs> I made his favorite animal that, you know, I run out of stories to tell him, right? I made her be terrible at math one day because it was making him laugh. I'm like, two plus two is uh, 17. And then I make her be the best singer in the world because I wanted him to understand that just because Ellie the elephant was bad at math doesn't mean she doesn't rock it somewhere else, right? You help her with math and then she sings. And I grabbed a couple of his pictures today because I want to talk about how unadulterated they are. Like, what do we think this is, right? Yeah, we never ask that question to no. a kid. No, I always say, what is it? Instead of saying, I think that looks like... Yeah, I, I, I was like, hmm, this looks like a lot's going on there. Tell me the story. And he said, it's cobras. You can see yeah. the cobras, right? Obviously cobras. And then this one here we've got, oh, this is a, a superhero cockroach. It fires the bad guys out of the city. I love he knows that. I hate cockroaches, so I don't know. I think he was trying to make me laugh. But I'm showing you these because the point is, let's see, this is lightning and water tsunami circle. And the flash, kids draw with such an abandon. They do. And they draw because they're feeling a story inside. And that's why I used to paint and create. And somewhere along the line, sometimes, somehow, 
it's, it's possible to lose that joy. And that's exactly what happened to you when you decided to study this thing that you loved. What happened? So um, as I kind of mentioned, that learning disability led me to college. This is the way I got in to school. Um, so I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts. And when you're sitting in that academic setting, uh, there was so much critiquing going on. And it was, and I always was painting things that made me feel really happy. And there was not probably some depth to it as the academic world might say. And so the critiques always made me feel a little bit lesser about myself every time I would walk out. And so by the time after four years of getting that, you know, Bachelor of Fine Arts, I just said, I'm going to, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. And I'm going to use my other gifts, um, which could be whatever they were. Um, so I didn't, I didn't paint for many years. I mean, you went off on an incredible path of, of working with, with nonprofits, with charities. So you had this giving spirit, but you weren't giving to yourself in right. a way. That's right. And I've always, I was constantly seeking. And I can remember talking with friends saying, I just don't feel like I'm content. I don't, and I loved what I did. I mean, I worked yeah. for great organizations, but it was the day that I stepped back in that classroom, which I don't back. I mean, I was never trained as a teacher, but yeah. classroom, you know, thinking in the student's mindset versus a teaching mindset, I fell back in love and watching well, I didn't have four-year-olds, but I had six-year-olds. Watching a six-year-old draw yeah. as incredible as, you know, a cobra and just seeing that their imagination would just go in that line. It didn't matter what direction the line went in. They were telling a story that was in their head on paper. And that's, that's essentially what art is, is we tell the story. Yeah. Our paper and our pen or our, you know, paints or brushes. Yeah, and I mean, it starts when you're a little kid, like the lightning bolts come from the sky, the flash is so fast, he's, a, he's in a tsunami. It, it starts that literal in a sense, but as, as you grow up, and maybe when you're little too, sometimes the story is just a feeling. And what struck me about your art the very first time I saw it was a, a common feeling that I chase, which is the edge of light. You know, it could be the horizon, it could be an idea, it could be the feeling of light, but I don't know if you have any of your paintings behind you right now, but um, yeah, let's let's spy on them because this what I love, what I love, look at that. So there's this stormy sort of sky, and to me, there's there's an I, there's an idea right in the middle. There's a thought right in the middle. What were you thinking when you painted that? So that line constantly comes up, and I mean, I that is stormy. This is a little bit happier here. Yeah, uh, but. The line constantly was showing up in my work when I went in a professional direction and I kept trying to ask myself, what is that about? What is it about? And I realized it's truly about grounding myself and finding that, that place every day where you can just center your soul and having grown yeah. up, uh, you know, we're constantly near the beach. We see the sunrise, the sun sets. And, you know, when that sun set every day, Anytime you look at a sunset, it's beautiful or any t at the end of the day. And I just feel like you get that just like that. Just yes. the, the mm -hmm. exhale. A great day is done. This still is going to still the sun is still going to set even when whatever chaos is happening in our life. And so I realized that that's constantly showing up in my work, that line, that grounding line to just remind us that, you know, we can set our two feet on this earth and we can do the best that we can do. And sometimes the line is, is dark and sometimes the line I've seen in your work is bright gold. Right. And I love that too. And, you know, I went looking in my old paints for, for gold, but I only had silver. And I was like, you know, I kind of like that too, because yeah. silver is that, that in-between light. It's the light that could belong to morning or belong to night. And I love the overlap, you know, that moment where we always, we always know and sense by the colors, whether it's the end or beginning of a day but there's that last little fading line that could belong to any of it. And that's what I really love about your work is there's a timelessness about just a, a line. And then when you're, when you're doing watercolors, you're literally dropping the color on the page and it's, it's spreading and, and moving. Um, so this is 
guys, look at, I, I got a present this morning, ready? I swung by because luckily this time, one of my guests is actually local to Tampa. So I, I didn't have to rely on, you know, going out and buying these. So she said, I'm going to give you everything. And I said, wow, this is going to be a good day. It's not every day that somebody says I'm going to give you everything. I said, what are these? She said, all the colors of the rainbow. So there are little, little dabs of, of your watercolors. And essentially they, they just sat here all day. And all I have to do to reactivate, you said, was add some water. So right. while I ask you more about, you know, your thought process as an artist, I thought it would be really fun to talk about um, how to paint and how to kind of let your let your mind go because whether somebody wants to to draw to paint or maybe they just maybe they want to write maybe they want to refinish a piece of furniture start working out you know all of these mental roadblocks that we have become a good cook you know or or experiment in the kitchen and not be tied to the recipe all of these things that we do to ourselves to play by the rules and and wind up locked in a box. Yes. I want to talk about breaking because that was your journey. You yes. know, you went and you learned what the, what the box was. You learned what the rules were. And you said, you know, I don't think this is for me. And then a bunch of kids in your first grade class reminded you that you had a vivid imagination. That's right. And I think, I think so often we say we can't do it or we set up these roadblocks or these obstacles. And um, I think you just have to jump off a cliff and try it. And when I do workshops with people are like, I'm just yeah. scared. It doesn't look right. Well, what is right and what is wrong? I mean, what co whatever comes out of you is what you're going to get. Yeah. And, um, and it and sometimes it's not beautiful, and that's okay. Pitch it and start. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend of mine who's an an incredible artist, and she designs jewelry. And uh, Isla Taylor, she's awesome. And she said she told me once. She said sometimes you have to just throw up this ugly art. She you said, did. throw up this ugly art because you need to get it out of your system and you need to get it out of the way to make the good art that's coming. And I think, I think writers feel that way. I mean, I think oh, you for sure. that, I mean, you just, it's kind of like those, if you've ever done the artist way, the book, have you done that book? Uh, the artist way? I have not. I've heard of it. Um, I'm really, okay. So confession here, you're making me confess things. I'm really bad at reading anything about, you know, craft structure, storytelling. I don't like to read those things. So what I do is I make my poor co-author, Dominique, <laughs> I make, she loves to study. So I tell her, okay, Cliff Notes, tell me what they are. So guess what? You get to fill that role. Cliff Notes, <laughs> tell me about this book. This is a great book. And, and especially for writers, it teaches you every morning to wake up and do your morning pages where you just, yeah. it's all brain dump and mm -hmm. Get it out of your system and and we do that often with painting in the morning or you do it with writing this book guides you in a great way i just i'm a big fan of it um but it allows you to just get all that stuff that's inside of you that creativity to just pour out and do beautiful things or be pitched i mean it doesn't you you can't put too much pressure on yourself for perfection because there is nothing right. perfect Right. It always, everything is a sketch first and sometimes things don't ever make it, you know, into the, into the book, into the painting. So right. you, you promised me that these would be reactivated. I'm looking at them and they're, they're very sticky. Um, you, you know what you're doing. I trust you. So, <laughs> so, so let's, let's uh, talk about somebody who maybe want, I mean, these are, you can, you can get these at any craft store, right? You can. I mean, if you want, I mean, if you want higher end watercolors, I mean, it doesn't matter. You can use any yeah. kind of watercolors, but I would go to um, Blick is a really good resource. Awesome. I don't oh, ready? Guys, everyone who's watching, would you look at this? This morning when I stopped by and picked up the paints from Katie, I, she said, let me just show you really quick how to do this because I've never done watercolors before. And she just, you know, did, did blue. And then I said, I really love the gold that you use. Is that watercolor or acrylic? She said, that's acrylic. You know what this looks like, everyone, right? It looks exactly like my little Find Your Fairy Tale logo. So karma, kismet, whatever, you weren't planning it. Now I'm going <laughs> this because it's my special, it's my special random um, Find Your Fairy Tale original artwork by Katie White. So fun. I'm so <laughs> glad you have it. I, um, I love it. So Katie gave me a big pile of um, fun watercolor paper. And I've got, did I fill up my water? Mm, you know what? I'm stealing the water that I'm drinking and I'm dumping oh. it into my, because I forgot to get water from the sink. So here we go. That works. Yep. All right. And now I've got a little paper towel action in case I need to blot oh. my brush. Paper towels are so good. They're the best tool. 
and I have a little a little scrap of paper. So let's let's paint our way toward the light, the okay. light that we both I love, the edge of light. You probably can't see my stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Probably well, not. I, I you know, you just it angle it down, or you can tell me what to do, and um, then we can hold it up and talk about what we're doing. But I think at this point, um, people are probably more excited to uh, see the page here, right? So here, I can hold mine now. up. I'm pretty yeah, used perfect. to it. Okay. Um, so what we're going to start with, and I think is um, always a good, good thing to start with, is your brush and get it wet. You want to okay. put it in some water. So I've got my little... Um, thing here and I'm putting it in oh, some look, we've got our happy mason jars here we go uh, great jars and so then I like to just saturate the paper okay with the water okay so uh -huh. so we're just saturating you're almost like painting your paper with water you can't okay. see anything yep, so yeah so you get it a, a little bit yeah, wet I don't see anything but um right you know, I, I have it pretty pretty soaking wet there we go so All right take your wet water brush or water yeah the brush with water on it yeah and pick up a color that you like it, it does not matter what color hmm. no just... i'm gonna go with orange because it's just i'm kind of curious my my tendency would be to go for like the blues and the kind of quiet twilight colors mm -hmm. so just for fun i'm gonna do orange just to see that's a good idea all right um and now Okay, so now just drag your brush across and see what happens. And tell me what you're, you're discovering as you're doing that. Oh, okay. So let me see if I can angle this down so you can see. So what's really cool, guys, is I did the thinnest of lines, and the paper has all these ridges in it. So it's, it's literally growing, you know, <laughs> where it makes these lines. Oh, look, and now that I'm holding it up, it's kind of fading down. Do you see how it's dripping? Oh, I like that. It'll drip down. It'll I drip. like how it dripped down. So I'm going to put some more orange. We're going to be brave today. There and so that's part of what I love about painting and is watching the watercolors do their magic. They just kind of, they spread and dance across that paper. Yeah. There's like discovery. It's like it, it, they've got a mind of their own. They do. It's unpredictable. I tell people this all the time. When they commission me for a work of art, I'm like, well, just remember, it has a mind of its own. So I'm going to try to fun. turn that so you can see. I'm going to, yeah. I'm just going to let mine kind of fall down. And I just let it drip. It's not a big deal. But one of the things that I love to do, and I gave you a bag of salt, um, so I, I don't yes. know if you want to try it. But I Did like you all know just... that one of the major art supplies is a bag of salt? <laughs> so it's also another grounding element that I like okay. to add to my pieces. So add the salt just a little sprinkle when it's wet and so when it's wet and then you're going to let it go don't do anything else to it don't go back over it with paint so make sure you have the color that you want okay and then just do a little tiny sprinkle of salt and let it be okay so then what i love to do and it's kind of hard because i'm doing this like <laughs> doing this holding it up. but um so I always do this, this big, like kind of rectangle, as you can see here, a little rectangle of color. Then I start to create my horizon lines. I think and I, I put way too much salt. I do like okay. salt. It's okay. But, you know, we'll see what happens when we, when we move it. Okay. So this is, I've done my sky and now okay, it's time perfect. to do now, my, my land. At the bottom of your sky, yeah. drag any kind of color across Ooh, okay, so okay see how mine's getting really intense and i like yes. to go intense here all right let's see you've got sepia brown paint gray oh all these beautiful colors i remember the names from from when i used to paint with with acrylics let's do some sepia brown yeah so that's going to be kind of yeah your brown color and so at just and and let the water do its beautiful magic so I just pushed up, like I pushed up and yeah, my saw horizontal, that. and all of a sudden I made trees. You did. That, welcome to my world. <laughs> you were right. I'm going to fall in love with watercolor. Oh, it's so fun. So this then, is so great. So as you've got your little horizon line, and ignore my paint drip here because I'm just holding this up. We're just not going to worry about that. I like to drag okay, so the, the the next step after you've got your horizon line and you've got yeah. your really cool trees going. I like to drag my paint across and then I touch, I sometimes say I kiss the horizon. Okay. 
so that I leave that little white line there and then I drag it all the way down like this. Okay, so we're leaving a little. Okay, stick. look. Yeah, so let it kiss, like just, yep, a okay. little kiss to that. Okay, and so then drag yeah. that color or that water all the way down to the bottom. Okay. You see it? Yeah, I want some blue. We're okay, so now you can add some more color. I will, I tend to go back into my horizon. So here mm -hmm. I am. I'm, I'm doing this with, mm -hmm. I mean, where gravity, gravity is going to take over right now. Yeah, this okay. is going to be the, the sideways, the sideways painting from, <laughs> from Find Your Fairy Tale. So, okay. and that's okay. Gravity is taking over. Um, you make so it you look so easy. Oh, I see what you're doing here. Okay. Yeah, so I add more color along the horizon line and then it just bleeds down into that beautiful reflection. And then I'm going to do a little sprinkle of salt and I'm going to leave it and okay. I'm not going to touch anything else. And you can kind of watch what you can kind of see. I'll hold it up for you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Okay, so you just dropped some paint on there, and all of a sudden we're in this beautiful marsh. I see a mar I, I see a marsh, and there's definitely a full moon involved with that light. Absolutely, we've so had now, a beautiful full moon lately, haven't we? You must have been inspired. Uh, yep. So I'm gonna let this guy dry, and then we'll come back and we'll see what the salt does, because that's that's one of the fun parts about the process is that when you're sitting there creating and you throw some salt down and you've got the water and the paints working, they really do do their magic. And so I will leave them and go pick my kids up at school or go run to an, you know, run an errand and I'll come back and, and this is what the salt will do. I mean, like, I'm just going to show you kind of an example. Like it just creates wow. this. Yeah. Like yummy sky that just comes out of nowhere. I love so, it. I love it. It does. It, it looks like, yeah, that magical light just has extended into a thought with, with arms and veins and wind and leaves. I love it. They do. And it all, every piece takes on its own personality. And you know so, what I'm doing right now? I'm going, oh, I don't like this. I don't, this part's boring. Oh, ew, I, this is too much black. So I'm doing okay. that thing that I do. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this away. No, 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 put no. It somewhere else. Listen, no, no, wait, try something before yeah. you do before you take it away, take your your paper towel. Yeah, take your paper towel. Dab it, dab, dab it, and see what happens. Dab the part you don't like. Take your finger. Yep, yep. Is it okay. coming? Up? It coming is. Up. Mm hmm There we so go. Water to it, and you can dab it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just too black. And I if didn't... you don't hmm. do it again, hmm. I gave you. Let's see. So that's a little, a little more interesting to me. That I love. That. This is this is my. I just did a painting face. You know, that, but that that's what I really want to talk about while we while we let this dry. Um, you know, when you create something, my tendency is I don't I don't love it. Sorry guys, there's an earthquake. I'm trying to show you paintings and bring it back. And there we go. Hello, the world is calm now. Okay, so so yeah, you know, when people are pursuing the thing that they love the most, sometimes they're so hard on themselves. And I, I wanted to have these conversations to talk about how to quiet those dragons. You know, I want to slay them all together, but sometimes you can't. They rear their ugly heads in all sorts of interesting ways. Um, but how do you keep your dragons quiet? And I guess the first question for that would be, what are your dragons? Ooh. <laughs> There's lots of them. Um, we all have lots of dragons. So, you know, for me, let's think if I can answer the question of who the, what my dragons are. Um, am I, am I good enough? You know, does somebody really, am I, is, am I, is my art really worth what somebody wants to buy? So that sometimes creeps into my head, but really how I try to stay away from those dragons is stay in your own lane. Mm -hmm. Like really focus on, what works for you and what brings you joy every day. Um, I do find that that keeps the head from spinning. If you're grounded, you know, if you start your day ground every day and you get up and you say, okay, today is about what's going to work for either my business or my family or my friends. 
um, and you're in your lane and you're not looking to the left and you're not looking to the right, and you're not worried about what works for neighbor one and neighbor two or friend one and friend two. It's all about what works for you. And it doesn't look the same. It doesn't right. look like that. Is that and what was hard about art school for you? Did you find yeah. that you were constantly, constantly thinking about where you stood in relation to others? Yeah, constantly. Because you're putting this work up and yeah. you're looking at magnificent stuff. And people are saying, well, what's your style? And who are you? And what, I don't, I don't think at the age of 19, 20, 21, any of us know who we are. I think we're all discovering. So I, I really will say, I think age, experience, wisdom comes with that. I mean, that comes, that comes with it. And I don't think I really discovered that until I was 45. I mean, I really think the day that I stepped outside of that classroom and decided do this on your own, if it fails, go back to it. Like what's the worst case scenario? You, you didn't sell any art. And, mm -hmm. but did you have fun making it? But did you have fun making it? Exactly. And I, I think it, when we tap into the God-given gifts we're given, when, when, we are, when we are really in line with what our call is in life, you're just going to explode. And I tell this to people all the time, like, follow what you love. It doesn't have to look like, again, the person to the left and the person to the right. And I think that's really important, especially in this society, in this world we live in. It's, oh, they look like they're so happy. Well, yeah, it works for them. That's their gift. Are you using your gifts? And so I think for me, that's how I slay my dragons, if, if you want to say. And it doesn't mean there aren't days where I think, oh, gosh, I'm not in that gallery or I'm not mm -hmm. behind so-and-so. And I really wish that so-and-so would buy my art or notice me, whatever. You can't let that noise in your head take over. You have to say, every day I wake up and I do this and I feel really good about what I'm doing. And, and one person bought my art this week and says it brings them calm, joy, peace, whatever it is, then I made a difference. We're done. Like, good. Awesome. Next yeah. week. That's kind of how I look at it. One person and, and just what the, what the day brought versus the big long-term goal. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, we, we actually haven't talked a lot about money per se on, on the series. And I think it's because we all, we all know we need a certain baseline to survive. We all know we have luxuries and leisures that we aim to achieve, mm -hmm. but whatever money you do or don't have, doing something that brings you that joy is, is something that you can control. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why these conversations to me means so much, even though I can't exactly control what's going on with my painting over here. The salt is doing some things. The salt, if, if anybody's joining right now, um, apparently to paint with watercolors, Katie White style, you need paintbrushes, watercolors, and a nice bag of salt. No, this is not for tequila shots. Um, we, don't, we don't know what the paintings will show, <laughs> what will look like if we do that. But what's so interesting about the salt that you threw on there, it kind of crystallizes, guys. I'm gonna show you what happened. Um, almost like like snowflakes or corrosion. <laughs> Do you see what happened? All of a sudden, this went from a blob of orange to northern lights. God, I told you, don't give up on it. You were about to throw it away. I was. It, guys, you saw it. It was so ugly. <laughs> it's not. This is my now, that's such an important lesson, though, too, because me, me as an author, there, I, I, there are so many times I'm like, nope, nope, nope. I'm, uh, this is awful. And I always say, steal from yourself, borrow from yourself. So, so leave it alone for a little while and I'll return to it. It's so interesting that I'll return to my words and I'll have faith in my words. I'll paint with my words. But right. then when it comes to, to actually painting, which I really do love to do, I'm uh -huh. really quick to go, eh, that doesn't, that doesn't look like what I thought it was going to look like. And I think that's, that's what you have to get away from is not have an idea of what it's going to be before it is. That's, so I often in my workshops will say to somebody, okay, tell, I want you to just think of the vibe and how you feel before you begin painting. Now go paint. And then I want you to think about the vibe of how you feel after you finish painting. Mm hmm look at it. Now you've gone through quite a journey from the beginning. I, I mean, you were like, like, oh, I, get yeah. it. I was like, I was like and you said, Bleh. yeah. But, and then along came this simple tool, a paper oh, towel. Look, 
guys, these are my dragons. I slayed some art dragons right here. Literally, yeah. I, I blotted it and it kind of came back into, into yeah. some sort of less blob form. But yeah. I, I love that the paints, the paints are doing things on their own. That's you know, it. that's kind of cool compared to oil or acrylic where you have to manipulate everything. I think I found, I like this. You definitely, you could tell from my personality that I like it. Oh, look what happened to yours. Yeah. Yeah. Now I there's, now there's stars shining in your moonlit marsh. Oh. <laughs> it's magic. So it I just, away my, gave away my secret. So all the people out there watching this, that's the secret, the salt. <laughs> The secret is the, the secrets in the salt. You know, I think, I think the secret from everybody that I've talked to, if there is a secret that I've found in, in the short time that I've been doing these conversations is that when there's a sincerity mm -hmm. and joy in creating the product, the product becomes something that people love. You know, when you're doing it for, because you think that's what people want, or they say, this is the kind of book that will sell, or this is what's marketable you know, then it doesn't work because you're not being genuine. You've been painting your own style and then you got scooped up by, by I, I wanna talk about that, about how it works where when you're mass reproduced, mm -hmm. then these major catalog stores, they, they create canvases out of your reprints. That must be pretty cool. It's fun. I mean, it's, I mean, <sighs> Yes, it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's it's weird. It's one thing to have, you know, this beautiful, unique piece of art, but it's it's kind of cool too to say you you went mainstream. Like I always wonder when I'm I'm looking at let's say the the Wayfarers of the world or even on on Amazon, you know, where you see print by artists. I'm like, what's their story? How did that print wind up here? And right. it's just kind of cool to say, hey, yeah, it, it'll live in a commissioned, a beautiful commissioned work on somebody's individual wall, or there's something that you do that's so universal that people can find joy in it at a mass level. Right. So I am grateful that my work has been picked up by a company that, that does reproduce it and gets it out to more people. And I have said, you know, I think it's not everybody can afford an original piece of artwork, but everyone should have beautiful art in their home. And which is why I, sell small pieces because I think everyone yeah. should a little piece <laughs> but it's it's fun that more people my you know my style can reach more people Look, guys this is for sale it's um exactly. only twenty thousand dollars for this original <laughs> piece of yeah. art I love it you can sell it <laughs> you know what actually I had stuck um a bookmark so see look I did I did hide with me colors because I would never normally paint in this color, but the book that I wrote is, is these colors. So I was like, it was in the corner of my eye when we started talking. So I said, I'm gonna grab orange, why not? But the reason I'm, I'm grabbing this now, Katie, is because it brings me back to, to light. And so when I said borrow from yourself, um, I had a poem that I wrote in college about the edge of light that I would see setting um, during the winter. A winter sunset in New England has this blazing power that's icy cold. And it sort of stru struck me as, as so sad. It, it looked like everything that was going away. And I jotted this little poem. I was probably, gosh, I don't know, 17 maybe. And it lives in some journal somewhere. And then finally I achieved, you know, bucket list and publish a book. And I stole it from myself and turned it into a description of one of the characters as everything is kind of crumbling out from under her. Um, I, I said there was something about the edge of white sky, meeting wind spindled trees, charcoal limbs cutting and cut by their own offshoots, lines inside lines, the bleached horizon cross hatched to gray that made me wonder if I could still hope for a version of what we built. And when I saw your paintings for the first time, I immediately was like, oh, she's saying something about the edge of light. And when we say something about the edge of light, we say something about the edge of life and everything that we're, we're reaching for. So it, it, it just struck me that two completely different mediums yep. were, were chasing light. And coming together. And that's what, yeah. that's what connecting is all about. So. When, um, when this is all dry, you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, so I use like a little piece for a bookmark. Yeah. I'm going to make a bookmark. You should. I'm make a bookmark for somebody. I don't know. Can we paint one more thing? 
and and talk about a little bit more how to sort of let go of these inhibitions. So um, guys, I obviously did everything wrong with, with painting at first where I said, ew, yuck, blah. Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm not saying I did anything wrong with the paint. I'm saying I did things wrong with my mindset. So this time we're going to only be positive, right? I wonder if you can see, can you see better? I don't know. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. I can totally see that. That's You're not going to see me, but we're going to, you don't need yeah, to see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see art in action, which is pretty cool. So, um, okay. like I said, you can start however you want, but this is how I like to start. I like to start, I'm going to, uh, I don't have a big brush, but I'm yeah, going to probably go. gave it to me when, when you had me borrow it. <laughs> no, it's probably in my kitchen. Um, I'm going to go with a pink sky because I just, I've been yeah. gravitating towards pink these days. Um, I have a friend that loves pink who inspired me to do pink. And so I'm just going to. I'm actually getting my brush full of color and Oh, okay. So you didn't, paint. did you make the whole page wet again first though? I didn't. I didn't. You didn't? I okay. So I'm going with a long rectangle right now that's pink. So it's just a watery pink, pink, yeah. pink. Can you see it? I um, can. Yeah. It okay. looks great. I'm going to do blue. Why not? Do blue. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to add a little more color to mine. And sometimes I like to, I like to count to 10 quietly. I used to tell my students, yeah. count to 10 to get more color on your brush, but do it in your head because there's nothing like a classroom of 22 that are counting to 10. Uh, <laughs> 20, 22, six exactly. year olds all counting to 10. So I'm just brushing it down yeah. on my, my paper here. And actually you could probably see it a little bit better this way. Can you see it that mm -hmm. way? Yeah, you can see it great either way. It's working. Okay. So um, I'm, I like it with this amount of water and um, paint. So I, again, I'm going to do my little sprinkle, little tiny amounts of salt. I, I really have a hard time painting without the salt. I recently had a commissioned piece that yeah. um, somebody asked me to do out of town. And they were like, we don't want the, the dots is what they called it. The dots. And I was like, we're like, you mean, you mean the salt of my soul? <laughs> and I was like, why did you commission me? Because that's what I do. I do the Yeah, dots. that's kind of your trademark. So it was really mm. weird to do this whole piece without salt. I was like, oh, I want my salt. So well, that's your voice. You know, the salt is your voice as an artist. So it is. And it's it feels... really a little piece that was missing. But as a commission work, you know, you yeah. find the, the things that resonate with, with them. Exactly. So the next step that I'm doing is I'm taking a different size. Katie, brush. I'm making my face again. No, don't. It's beautiful. Don't do anything. Hey. Okay, fine. I won't do anything yet. Um, and of course, we just got a question from our viewers. May we ask okay. Katie a question? Yes, ask her anything. That's the fun of this is that it's, it's, a, it's a big conversation. So <laughs> any questions you have while she's painting, I will happily read out loud to her. And okay. she will probably answer them quite honestly. So I'm taking, just so everyone knows, knows out there, I'm taking yeah. some really saturated color onto this tip of my brush. And I'm going to drag it across my horizon line here. And just like Sarvani did earlier, I'm going to make trees. I'm actually pushing my brush down, dragging it up, and letting, letting the paint go into that watery. OK, I just down. copied you because I realized I didn't have enough I wasn't going bold enough I love um, it. with yeah, the color. Yeah. And so I love that as a little bit of a lesson that we can pull from, you know, watercolor philosophy, we can call it, exactly. where if you're too tentative, you're never going to get the picture that you want. And so I was super, super scared to put a big bold line, but then I looked at how dark um, the, the paint was that you did. And all of a sudden I put this green light on there and I really like that. And Oops, it, it, it makes such a difference. Yep. So huge difference. I, I took a bigger brush and I'm taking a little bit more pink and I'm, I went up into my, you can see I, I'm creating again that um, reflection. And so mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, um, you absolutely can. But it's not done to me. Like I feel like it needs a little bit more intensity. I'm gonna go back to being bold and yeah. adding some more into that horizon line. So I'm gonna get that smaller brush and I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna literally tap it in here and just let it let it travel with that water. Do you kind of see what I'm doing? I'm just, I don't know if you can see it. 
No, we can we can see everything. I'm watching because I noticed that you go in, in horizontal lines a lot. I do. <laughs> I do. And, and, I, you, and I just tried to do a vertical line and it was it was a little bit not what I expected. I haven't been able to do that. I wish <laughs> I could. I don't I don't feel the call. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do a little tiny drop of salt down here and I'm gonna let it do its magic. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. I'm just gonna yeah. let it and I'm gonna take a deep breath. And I'm going to say that was, that's the first time I've painted all week, by the way. Really? Yeah, it's been a very long, long week. <laughs> so I know, that's another it. thing, too, is life gets in the way, Katie, doesn't it? It's like, it sure does. you know, all the, all the busy things that we have to do. And it, it's, it's easy to punish ourselves um, for not doing all the things that we want to in a day. Mm -hmm. And I had a photographer friend of mine once um, back in Boston. I was like, oh, I'm in a bad mood today. And he said, why? And I said, I didn't, I didn't accomplish anything that I wanted to today. And he laughed at me. He said, I only get mad at myself if I didn't experience enough. God, I want to be that person. Right, me I too. Person. I'm a yeah. I'm list girl. I mean, lists are all over my house. And it's, I feel like I've accomplished if I cross off the list. But I want to be that person. Right, where you're just like, ooh, I felt something. But you are, because that's what you're doing when you paint. In the moment that you paint, you're experiencing something. So maybe we're a little more... Um, a little more in that sphere than we even think. Oh, question for you um, from, from one of our viewers. Thank you, by the way, for, for weighing in. Hold on. Let's see. Katie, what makes you choose the acrylic metallic paint over the fine tech watercolor? I have a teacher who keeps telling me it's wrong. <laughs> Doing my own thing anyway, but thanks. Okay. You are speaking Katie's language. I've known Katie for, you know, 2.5 seconds um, <laughs> from a distance here. And I can tell you that she's super passionate about ever telling an artist or anybody that, that a creative process is wrong. Yeah, so I, I do think it's important to learn technique, um, yes. but I also think it's important to experiment and play and allow your creativity to just explode and come out of you. So um, do I think there's a right or wrong way? No, I actually really don't. I probably would get fired if I were a teacher right now, but um, you asked the question about the the acrylic, right? Did, was that part of the yeah, question? Yeah, you know, why you chose to mix so, the mediums and go with the gold um, <laughs> with the acrylic versus sticking, stick, stay in your lane, stay with watercolors. Exactly. So one of the fun things, I mean, I, I do choose these acrylic paints to put into my watercolors because they're high flow and they do some magical dancing on the paper. I know that kind of sounds goofy and I sound like an artist, but, um, you are, and there's no, there's no such thing as goofy, um, artists allowed on find your fairy tale. I'm going to show you something really fun. Um, okay. see if I can move my phone down, um, without it falling down. Um, okay. Can you see this? Okay. I don't know if you can. Oh my gosh. I am flicking watercolors all over the place. That's okay. Flick away. That's what's so fun. <laughs> We're playing. Um, so I'm putting some water down here and I'm going to also add watercolor to it. And okay. I'm going with Cervani's favorite color scheme here, which is the blue. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to, I'm going to show you what the acrylic does. And so if any teacher tells you, you can't use acrylics with this, you just say, well, look at the beautiful stuff that happens. I'm going to do exactly what I did for you this morning, Cervani. So I'm I love literally this. using the, you do not need a lot of paint. I'm putting it right on the tip of my brush and I'm going to drag it through this. Um, can you see? You probably can't see. I wish you could see how fun with this does. It just moves. You know what? I'm going to hold up mine because I, I soaked it with water too. And I, I want to show you guys like watercolors are literally coming alive here. So if I just take, let's say I, I take a line here because boom, it just, it starts when it's wet. Look, see how it's just moving here and growing? Yes. And that's what happens. It's, it's like cloud formations or the beginning of an idea. It's really cool. You're like, okay, here's my thought. And now you do your thing. You just do, do all the work for me. Exactly. So watch. Okay, this is, okay. I, I'm going to take this over here. I just, if you can hear me, I'm going to try to have you see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. This is what's so fun. So some teacher is telling you not to add, I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Some teacher saying, don't add acrylics to your watercolor, but look what's happening. 
it's gorgeous. And you get this wonderful little turquoise color coming out here. We would never know that if someone told us we couldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we experiment. And that's why I just feel like there's no right or wrong way in art. I just really don't believe that. I think that's the way that art evolves. Again, you do have to, you have to learn the rules. But I remember when, I mean, anybody who, who knows me in real life knows that my, my dancing skills are unparalleled. They are so bad. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're, they're ridiculous. Um, but I tried as a little kid, I really did try, you know, in, in ballet, kids were going up, I was going down, they were going left, I was going, disaster. Um, but I tried to learn Indian dance, which meant a lot to me culturally. And we had a teacher that would, would keep the beat on this little, I don't know, like a little xylophone kind of thing. And she would speak in, in um, one of the Indian dialects and kind of keep a beat. And she would say, Deyum Dakka, Deyum Dakka. And I still to this day remember it. And in many ways, I feel like it's that teacher who's saying, don't use the gold paint. It's how you felt in, in art school where there's somebody sitting there going, Deyum Dakka. All I wanted to do was strap bells to my feet and have one of those amazing skirts that like spans out like an umbrella and spin in circles. That's what I wanted to do, but no, no, no. I had to learn all of the, the basic steps first. Right. And yes, there, there's a lot to that, but there's also those moments to let an artist breathe. Yeah. Teach me the basics, but then let the girl, let the girl swing in the, in the bells in the skirt. <laughs> never want to squash that spirit. And I just think every single one of us has that creative bug inside of us that somebody somewhere might have squashed and I just never wanted to be that person that was going to leave that lasting impression on a child or an adult saying you can't do it because you can like it's 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 all about what comes out of you and I I shared that this is a great story of one of my first graders the first year I was teaching and I was teaching them how to make bird houses and I said okay yeah. Start with the birdhouse, you do a square, and you're gonna put a triangle on top. It was all about shapes. And we were gonna make this birdhouse, and then we're gonna add this little bird. And this little first grader, I went over and I looked over and I was like, So tell me about your birdhouse. And she was like, I'm not making a birdhouse. This is my fairy house. And it was, I it love her. Ass a fish. And if the mom and I laugh about it all the time, because I sat there, I was like, How do you grade that? She didn't follow the instructions. And then I was like, she didn't need to follow the instructions. I love that. Station of a birdhouse is fairy land. And mm -hmm. if I had said to her at the age of six, you didn't do it right. Well, where would that take her in life? She would automatically feel failure. And yeah. now you need to feel failure ever. No one ever needs to feel failure in the art room ever. I just, or on the dance studio or, and no one needs to feel failure especially at the age of six, I think. I, yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people that I meet tell me that they wish they could write or they wish they could paint or they wish that they could play the, uh, a musical instrument. And do you think it, do you think, this is just an opinion question, but do you think obviously there's innate talent, right? That we're born with. I mean, there's so many people where you're just like, whoa, where'd that set of pipes come from? Where'd that, you know, ability to do that come from? But do you think that there's a part of this human spirit that all of us, are artists in some way? Absolutely. Picasso said it. Every, every child's an artist. I mean, yeah, it is true. We are all born with some kind of creativity in us. Have we tapped into it? Have we been given the, the permission to use it? Have we um, had the courage to try it? No, not everybody has that courage. You know, mm -hmm. again, shaped so much by what we're good at. Um, I'm a terrible math person, but I might actually be good. If somebody had nurtured me mm -hmm. and said, you know what, Katie, you can do this, but nobody ever did. So I, I really have no confidence there. So I have to tell my kids how to add two plus two. I mean, that's a joke, but that's actually really not a joke. <laughs> but I'm really bad at paying my bills on time because I forget. I wish somebody would nurture me by just right. doing it for me. But I just, just say, if anybody wants to take that off my platter. <laughs> But I, oh, who wants to do the boring things? I know. But I do think we all have some kind of creative capacity in our lives. I have a moth. Um, that I think we just need to tap into. Again, that could be singing. It could be dancing. It could be cooking, 
gardening, all those things bring creativity to them. And um, when you tap into it and you use it, there's so much joy that can come out of you. I, I completely, I completely agree. Do you think that the fact that you found that you said you found it at, you know, when you were 40, yeah. you started teaching um, when you were what, you know, late thirties, right? 39. And so that's when you started, yeah, you started teaching art mm -hmm. after walking away from it because it right. just stopped having its beauty. So would you say that right now you're living your fairy tale? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I love my work. It's good. Every day. I was telling this to a friend who lives in New York. And I said to him, um, he's like, so how is life? And I was like, life is so good. I love my life. And yeah. he's like, her 47-year-old say that often. Yeah. I was like, oh, really? But I do. I love my life. I love what I get to do every day. I love my life a lot better now than when I was questioning whether I was living it right all the time. If I maybe back when I was 20, whatever, stopped wondering for a second, I'm sure I would have been just as happy. Right. But I, I think there's something to be said for, for exploring all the options and then coming in for a landing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another question. Um, hey, that's my cousin all the way in Alaska. Oh, he's, wait, look, ready this shirt? Matt, look, he designed this shirt and painted on it. And oh. I was wearing it in honor of celebrating art and I had no idea that he'd be tuning in. I was gonna send him a picture later. Hey, okay, so he has a question. Um, Katie, does watercolor work on a canvas you would typically do acrylic? No. no. Um, it doesn't adhere to it. So here's how I solve that problem. Um, so if you ever want to go big and you want that kind of that kind of um, the canvasy look, I take um, wood blocks and watercolor paper and I adhere them to it. With, Ooh, that's cool. They're really fun. Um, I, I like you're gonna die. I'm gonna share this. <laughs> this is old. Let me see. I use Mod Podge. Oh, um, I played with Mod Podge as a kid a lot. But it's such uh, a great name. What? It's such a great name, Mod Podge. So, so you can do that on it. Um, and I've done big, like maybe a twenty-four by twenty-four. But here's an even more fun thing. Hang on. So, if you want that that big canvas look, hold on. Sorry. Oh, you're okay. You you've left. I'm I'm sitting here. Okay. So anybody who's been and been uh, watching since the beginning, I've been making faces and like anytime I don't like something, but Katie taught me that I just grab a paper towel and I blot it and I start over. So I think watercolors are my thing because I really like being able to start over when I don't like something. Show yeah. me, show me this. What it, so oh, this, that's, oh, that's really pretty. Well, so it gives you that, that canvas look. And then I paint on the back it's called a it's called ground it's a watercolor ground literally you just hmm. you paint it's almost like doing a um why am i drawing a blank on the name of what i'm trying to think of anyway i'm anyway it's called a ground and then you can yeah. paint the color right on the wood which is great oh so, that's cool can't do it on a canvas sorry yeah one of our viewers was just saying decoupage she said she said i was just gonna say decoupage and in a way that's that's what the mod podge is <laughs> right. Decoupage sounds so fancy. Modge Podge exactly. almost rhymes with it, but it, it's a whole different ballgame. It works. It, it works. works. So fun. Um, here's your, here's what happens. Whoever. Oh, that's beautiful. Did use acrylics with our watercolors. Looks, look what can happen. So don't listen to the teacher all the time. Right. Don't listen to the teacher. Doing the, doing the, uh, the beat that says Dame Daka. You know, even from every teacher is, I, I like to assume that everybody's well-intentioned, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll bet if, if you went back to any of your teachers who stifled you and said that that happened, I'll bet you half of them, at least, unless you've got, you know, there's always arrogance in the world, but I'll bet you half of them would be so shocked. I don't think we realize what we do to people when we tell them that's not how you do it our words can be really, really painful unintentionally, yeah. unintentional. And, or a look we might give, or, you know, I would have students say, are you upset with me? I'm like, no. And I just, I didn't realize I was giving off a look. So you oh, just- how funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still, I, I think, 
this might be therapeutic for me. I don't, I, I, I'm such a go, go, go person that I'll probably have to do this while doing something else because heaven forbid I actually, you know, do one thing at a time, but I love to listen to books. It's the only way that I can squeeze them in. Uh -huh. So I think I just found my new thing that I'm going to do while reading, listening to, in many cases, my friends' books. You know, I've been lucky enough to get to know some authors. And even if I think it's ugly, I just might send them the bookmark that you I make. And it's bookmark. This is what I was painting while I was listening to your story. So this it's, is my little, I don't, I guess this is, let's see. This is a late summer pond, maybe uh, on the Cape. Look at so that. There we go. Late summer pond on the Cape. <laughs> Nothing great, but hey, I, it's a feeling. That's what, that's what I was thinking about as soon as I, and it told me what it was. I, love I, put, it. I put the paint down just like yours. I said, oh, look, that's a moonlit marsh. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you did that one? Um, which one? This one? Yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, well, you were I thinking I'm trying to talk to somebody on a phone at the same time while giving a painting <laughs> lesson and contemplating my entire artistic philosophy and the meaning of life? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Sarvani. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there was a lot of thought. Right? Um, I love these colors. I just, yeah. I just, I love the earthiness of them. Um, um, sometimes I like that dark and stormy. I just do. I, I just do. I love yeah. it. I think, you know, there's a lot to learn, but next time you have a workshop, I'm going to have to tune in and, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sure most of them are virtual these days and learn a little bit more, but yeah. Katie, your words have been so inspiring and your paintings are so beautiful. Thank so you. thank you for, for talking about how to put the line of light down on paper, because I think we're all sort of chasing it in terms of what we want to do with our dreams. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, it's been a joy to get to know you. And I love sharing what brings me joy. So thank you for having me. You might be, you might be stuck with me now because you are in Tampa. So all of a sudden, like, hey, I just, uh, I just wanted to return those watercolors that you lent me. Um, do you want to have coffee? Do you want to teach me how to paint some more? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so <laughs> you might be stuck. A really quick question before we go. Um, Instagram cuts you off in an hour. Or, you know, that, that's your saved by the bell here. Uh, <laughs> one more question. How many watercolors should you buy to get started? Um, you know, I wouldn't go with a ton because you can mix colors and you can make them. Um, into other things. I'm going to try to find something on my very messy desk here to show you a really good start. Messy desks are a sign of genius. So are yep. messy cars. So are messy houses. Just saying. This is a great start. This guy is by Windsor Newton. Okay. And you, um, buy the, it's like $25. Um, you can mix these colors. You can see that I kind of mixed it up here. I'm a mess when I paint. This is a great start. Um, Blick sells it 25 bucks. That's hey, are you, you're in your, your studio, right? Right now. Do you want to see um, it? I want to see, can you show everybody, uh, the beautiful artwork that's in there, but also please show them the floor. Hey, okay. I'm super messy. So I'm going to just show but you. But I love this because you have to, this proves that you are in the zone. Yeah. You see this, like paint is flying. When Katie it's is all creating, over paint my is literally flying. With floors. I have a dog here, <laughs> but yeah. this is the studio. So I'm just, I'll just give you a big, the, the big view. 365. <laughs> yeah. my desk? Can you see my desk? That's really yeah. nice. No, all of, all of the work is beautiful, but I just wanted people to see that sometimes you have to make a mess to create something beautiful. And if you think everything's going to come out perfect as you go along, you'll wind up like me, yeah. not painting anymore. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah. And it's, um, it's comfortable. And that's what's important, to find a space where you're comfortable to create and be who you want to be. Katie, you're the best. Thank you for spending some time Thank with us. Thank you. It was so fun. I appreciate it, Sarani. I loved it. Thanks. I'll see you soon. Everybody, thanks so much Bye. for watching. And hopefully uh, you've been inspired to maybe go out, drop 25 bucks on, on some watercolors and show me what you made. And if you do, oh yeah, tag, tag Katie and me if you do try something, because I know she'd love to see it. I would love to see it. And you guys are the best for tuning in. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Sarani. Good night.